Stuart Taylor is joining me in studio. He's here to introduce us to his ninth one-man show, Bespoke, that's showing at Monte Cassino in Johannesburg. Hello. Hello, Jen. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm very good. It's been a very long time since we've seen each it's other. It's been a year. You had different hair. I, I, it's you had longer hair. Mm. You had different eyelashes. In fact, you probably have a different skin because we do lose our skins and grow new ones. It's a new person. You're also a new person if you've lost all am, your skin. I and, am and a new person, yes. <laughs> new skin. Now, this is your ninth one-man show. Yes. How on earth do you keep things fresh? How do you, how do you change things up? I can't imagine writing nine one-man shows. I one do Nick Rabinowitz's material. That's my secret. When he's not, if I'm in a different city, I do Nick Rabinowitz's material. If he's in the same city, then I do Seven Gacy's material. Um, Have you ever been caught? No, no, I, I fly under the radar. No, I, I write about whatever comes to mind. I write about, uh, I often write around themes. This is mm. how I do nine one-man shows. So when I was single, I wrote a show called Dating for Dummies. I wasn't quite single, but anyway, it was, I was close enough to being single. Um, but I mean, I, I wasn't married. Then when I got married, I wrote, I wrote Learn a Husband. Then when I was broke, I wrote Money Society Mention. Then when I uh, needed more money, I wrote another Learn a Husband. <laughs> Vlog that cow. <laughs> um, and now, I wanted to write a show which, uh, which kind of gave me freedom to move. Because if I do those written shows, then they're very much theatrical shows, and they have mm. a, a dramatic arc, uh, and I'd work with the director. And I wanted to do a show which kind of showcased me as you would see me in a comedy club. Mm. So I thought, well, let me find a structure that works so that I can kind of move in and out of the material, play with the audience a little bit. And it means that each show is custom made. And that's what bespoke means. Custom made. <laughs> Tailor made. <laughs> I'm Stuart, I made the show. I like that. Yeah. Now this show is about labels, labeling people yeah. in society. Why did you decide to write about that this time? Were you being labeled? No, I was actually, it was, uh, the show could have been called Learn a Dad. It could have, mm. because it's kind of very much about my kids and, and the space that they're in and the fact that they're now in the world and, and what labels will be attached to them and what that means and, and all, of the, all of the baggage that comes with it. Because they don't live in that space. They don't, they don't know what they are in terms of being labeled yeah. anything. Uh, so I kind of, I, I talk about that, I, I, but it's funny. And I just, I talk about first world problems in a third world country and clawing our way into middle class and trying to stay there. <laughs> That's the most important part, is trying yes, to stay trying there. Yes, trying to stay there. How old are your kids now? Um, one is uh, about, yeah, I don't know, five, seven, <laughs> eight. They've been around for a while. I like them. <laughs> They're lovely. What They're advice? Five as and eight, seven. As a learner dad, what advice yeah. do you have for, for, other, dads. for other dads? Um, you know what? It, uh, well, boys and girls are very different. I talk to the audience about this and I get their advice. Uh, the best I've heard is you must basically just, uh, if you have boys, because boys just have energy that they've got to expend, you just, it's like a puppy. You just open the door, you let them out. That's and hope they come back. Well, you know, <laughs> they've both got their advantages. <laughs> it's oh. nice to have them around. They're fun. Are they? It's yeah. nice. It's, it's nice good. to it's have nice. them there. It's nice now. When mm. they first arrived, it wasn't great. I won't lie. Why? Just because now my wife's got these other men in her life. They're no longer my boobies. It's now the Dave's boobies. And he still, he knew, he knew that this affected me. And he dropped that in my face. He'd just be there. <laughs> So, that yeah. must have been hard for you. It was very hard. But now I've come to terms with it. Now he's my guy, Andy. He's my other guy. And they're my boys. And we hang and we play shark, shark in the swimming pool and have that good times, fun. climb climb trees. Now, we were speaking a little bit earlier about, about going then no, to school. No, oh. no, we're not supposed to talk about no, that. No, yes, we're not. Stop We're not now. talking stop about now. that. Just stop. Yeah. I said, mm, they want to yeah. make anyone. Yeah. Mm. So <laughs> they're going to school now. Yes, what's I went to a school visit this morning. What's that like? It's a date. You go on a date with a school and the principal, and then you sit, and then uh, you basically use eyes, you, you check, is this the right space for my school? And at the end, if you don't, <laughs> if you behave, then they say, oh, there's a place for your kid. Uh, would you like your kid? It's fair. It's, it's hardcore. How do you misbehave on a school visit? I, uh, I'm sure there are ways. I'm sure there are ways. There, there are, are ways. ways. Yeah. Wolf whistling at teachers. That's 
would a probably be a bad thing. That would be a bad thing to do on a school visit. Yes. You've got to keep your nose clean, just smile, and keep your hands behind your back, mm -hmm, and just say, mm, and ask, ask the right questions. <laughs> Now, the show's called Bespoke. You said each show is catered yeah. to each different audience. Yes. What can audiences expect? I, I imagine there's a lot of audience interaction. There's a bit. I chat to them. So I ask them, well, how many people? So uh, Joburg's audiences have been interesting because I've been there for a little while now. Uh, I'm getting lots of uh, not-so-young audiences. So I can't necessarily talk about my kids and how young they are because they'll be like, ah, our children are 24. Then what am I going to say? Oh, are they sleeping through yet? That's... <laughs> So, so then I've got to talk about other things. So mm -hmm. it, it just depends on where they are. We have visitors from overseas, then that's what we talk about. But we kind of always get to, a, get to the same point in the show where we talk about where this country is and where we're going and what mm -hmm. is positive mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. why it's good times. Well, have you, when's the last time you were heckled? Um, I get heckled all the time. I was really? heckled the last week at the show. The guy, there's a dude in the Scottish guy in the front. And I was like, hey, how's it going? I'm Stuart Taylor. Where's Alan Committee? And I was like, uh, he's in Cape Town, a theater on the bay. I thought it was going to be here. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's me. And then? You? Then he was just like, oh, I really wanted to see Alan Committee. <laughs> and I was like, you can, we you can, can Skype him afterwards if you want. If you really have want to a, see him. Have Maddie. a seat, enjoy my show. We'll talk to Alan on FaceTime afterwards. <laughs> All right. That's not really a heckle. That was just a dude who was That's disappointed that it was me instead of Alan. It was a misinformation. It was. Misinformation it was. on his part because it was yes. easy information to find out, and there were probably signs there outside. There were posters and everything. And there was a name on the ticket. There was. He was probably. My face on the door. Yeah, I am now worried about this man. Yeah. How well, is he going to function in yeah, society? It's okay. well, it's nice that he's Scottish and he doesn't see color. That's what we should take away from this. Yes, you must always the find the positive. The Scots don't see color. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> so, Bespoke is at Monte Cassino until... I don't at Monte Cassino until the end of the month. There's no tickets. Uh, there are tickets. There are tickets for this week. There are only tickets for this week. So, get tickets for this go. week. You can go. What, uh, what is uh, Wednesday at Corpus Eight, Thursday at Corpus Eight, Friday at Corpus Eight. This is like the 20-something of October this is in the 2015. This is the 20th today. Is the 20th. So from the 21st of October till about the 25th of October, there are tickets Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all at quarter past eight. Then there's an extra show on Saturday at quarter past five. Mm. And also my, uh, my Sunday show is at quarter past three. Okay. So this week at Monte Casino, make sure you go to Compute Ticket now you buy those tickets for Bespoke, because that's what I'm doing in Joburg. In Joburg. Yes. It's in Joburg. It's not Alan Committee. It's not Stuart Alan Committee. Taylor. It's me. And then I come to Cape Town, but that's to do something different. And what are you doing in Cape Town? I'm doing a brand new show with three other comics. It's called 2015 In Review. It's for a month at the Baxter. I'll come back. I'll come and gate crash your show. Come, come back. I'll bring, bring, bring everyone. the other guys. Bring all of them in. I've got writers. I've got a director. I've got other in. acts. We Let's put see how many people we, we can get in here. We don't have enough space. Yet. No, we we'll just get Mal them all Jones in. Mel Jones' ass is huge. She's going to be very upset that she said that. She is. <laughs> it's not true anyway, isn't it's it? Not. I love you. It's not true. It's not. Stuart is just being me. Yeah, it was just being a comedian. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me and I will see you at Bespoke if you're in Joburg.